Hi, my name is David and today we're going to analyze the world's biggest growth rate. From the video we obtained a lot of useful information. First we get that the arch for which it drops is 150 feet, which is 45 meters approximately. We also get that the rope measures 130 feet, that approximately it's between 40 meters. And also, finally, we know that the average human weighs between 70 kilograms. The, the system we chose is the rope plus the jumper plus the earth, so that the surrounding was nothing. First, we have to we, we have to analyze the rope swing as if it was an ideal rope, so that it has no stretch. First, we have to get the speed at the bottom of the rope. We can do that by analyzing through the energy principle, in which it, this means that delta E equals work. Since we're going to choose a system very large so that it includes the earth, we can assume the work is zero. So that we can assume that all the energy changes sum up to zero. On the initial state we only have potential energy because we only have a height. On the second state, on the final state we have kinetic plus, plus potential. If we make equal these two, we can solve for the velocity. The velocity is this. After that we need to calculate the tension in the ideal rope. In order to do that, we're going to use uh, F net perpendicular. We know that from previous formulas, this can be equal to mv squared divided by r. Since we already done, since we already solved for the velocity, we can just plug it in here. Now we only need to analyze the, the forces that are acting <coughs> on the road. Since we do a free body diagram, we can observe that tension and gravity are the only two forces acting on it. So if we solve for that and we plug it in into the formula, we can know that the tension is equal to this. Now we're going to analyze the same situation for 30 degrees from the bottom of the trajectory. First, we need to get the speed. Again, we're going to use energy principle. We know that on the initial state, again, it's going to have potential energy. This means MGH. On the final state, it's going to have potential energy and also kinetic energy. So it has MGH plus a kinetic energy. We know that uh, since we've chosen our system very large so that there was no work done, we can make the final energy equal to, to the first energy. So after plugging this into the formula, we can solve for the velocity. After solving it, we will get that the velocity is this in meters per second. Now, we're going to calculate the tension of the rope at that time. First, we're going to do our free body diagram. In this, we get that. On this part is acting in tension, and on this part is going to act a force of gravity times a cosine of 30 degrees. That's the angle that it really has of separation. <coughs> so we know, again from previous formulas, that F net perpendicular, that is the one I'm very interested in, is equal to mv squared divided by r. We know that F net perpendicular is going to be the tension minus the force of gravity. After solving it, and since we already have the velocity, we can get that the tension is this. Now we're going to analyze the, the case in which the rope uh, acts as an ideal spring. We know that's going to be true. So from the video we obtained that the jumper is going to free fall for 130 feet. And then the rope catches him and lifts him just 10 feet above the ground. We know from, from our research that the, height, the total height is 150 feet. And we know from the video that the, that the jumper only falls 130 feet and it catches just before 10 feet before the ground. So therefore we can assume that the total stretch of the rope is going to be 10 feet. If we pass these two meters, this is equal to 3.048. Now, our final analysis is going to be to calculate the stretch when it's at 30 degrees from the bottom of the trajectory. Okay, here we can have two cases. On the first case, Okay, according to the video, the jumper told us that he free fall for 130 feet. So if we use some basic trigonometry, we can know that at this point, when the trajectory is 30 degrees, it is actually at 112 feet. So this could mean that there is no stretch because it's still free falling. Nevertheless, we are going to calculate the stretch as if it, as if it existed something. Um, so, in order to do that, we're going to do again energy analysis. Delta E equals work, as if we chose our, our system too large, we can assume that there is no work done, so this is zero. So, let's now analyze the states. The first, the initial state is going to be only potential energy. And the final state is going to have a potential of spring. A potential, 
of kite and actually carry it. So we the, we now have this equation. Let's name it number one. After that, we know that F, uh, we're going to analyze the point body diagram. We know that if there are two forces acting, it's going to act a spring force and the gravity force at, a, at an angle that is cosine 30. So, after we've done that, we're going to solve for b squared, and here we will solve again for b squared in order so that we're able to do a system of equations where we can solve for s, since we do not since we do not possess those two data. After solving all the system of equations and some a little bit of algebra, you know that this is the stretch when it's at 30 degrees. Now that we have computed everything analytically, we've realized a computer model. As you can observe, this model agrees perfectly with our analytical data, since the tension is the greatest when it's on the bottom, and also from the graph of kinetic energy, we can observe that when it's at the bottom, it has the greatest speed. Thank you very much for your attention.